hello and welcome to today's webinar. We're excited to talk about NOIs and what they mean and what they can do to ensure that you get paid on every job. I'm guessing that you have joined this webinar today because you have or are having uh, a slow payment on one or more of your jobs. We are here to tell you, you are absolutely not alone. No matter the scale of your jobs or the size of your company, the one thing I can guarantee is that you'll leave today's session knowing exactly how you can take steps to save your time on paperwork, all while getting paid. Before moving forward, I want to quickly say that we are recording this session and you'll receive a link to the recording tomorrow if you'd like to watch it or share it with your team. If you have any questions during the presentation, go ahead and enter them in the chat box and we'll get to those questions at the end. All right. A little bit about myself. My name is Matt and I'm the manager of the training and onboarding team here at Level Set. I work every day to help businesses like yours get paid fast and without payment problems. Uh, part of, I think maybe the greatest part of my job is working with folks from all over the country uh, who are experiencing slow pay, problem payments, non-payments, and taking steps through Level Sets to get paid. Um, the best parts of this job are hearing back oftentimes really, really soon from our customers that hey, that job you helped me out on, they sent a check or I got a phone call from them right away. So uh, really looking forward to uh, showing you all some more tools you can use today. So Level Set is here to help you get paid. Our lien rights management software helps you track mechanically the notice deadlines, verify job site information, and basically just makes it easy to manage your lien rights paperwork. We'll also provide access to construction attorneys and other legal services. Plus we have all kinds of resources on our website from profiles outlining contractors' payment histories to educational guides. And here on today's agenda, what is an NOI? What is a notice of intent to lien? And am I required to send one? How will filing an NOI get me paid? And is there an easier way to send this paperwork? So a notice of intent is your secret weapon to get paid. Sometimes called a notice of intent or notice of non-payment, it warns the property owner, prime contractor, or any other party that a mechanics lien or bond claim will be filed unless payment of overdue amounts is made within a certain period of time. For example, 10 days, 15 days. Uh, although, you, although only legally required in a few states, there are benefits to sending these notices for projects in any state as they're inexpensive and very effective at producing payment. The NOI provides a lot of leverage when you're experiencing slower non-payment. Here is a list of the states where a notice of intent to lien or any sort of uh, other verbiage for an NOI is required. So we see Alabama, Arkansas, Colorado, Connecticut, Illinois, Louisiana, Maryland, Missouri, North Dakota, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. In those states, there are sort of further triggers where the NOI is required. And for example, in Colorado, it's required a certain number of days before you're allowed to file the lien. Uh, but Level Set is here to help on those. We have state-by-state -state guides that can walk you through. Will filing a notice of intent get me paid? Nobody wants to file a lien on a project. But we know that these notice of intents work because everyone wants to avoid a mechanics lien. If you've ever been in a situation where maybe as a homeowner, as a business owner, something shows up in your mailbox that says the word lien in it, it tends to get your attention, tends to prompt a response. And so we know that. And we also know that so far in level set, 56% of our notices of intent are paid within 42 days, which is about 48 days faster than the industry standard. And level set users with NOI policies see 90% of their NOIs paid within 90 days. Uh, this is a document that will get a reaction. For example, the one I point to, this was just a couple of weeks ago for me as a training and onboarding manager here. I worked with Dane up in uh, Northeast Property Restoration. They're in upstate New York. We logged in about a day after he signed up for Level Set. The first thing he did was send an NOI on a problem customer. And I said, you know, I don't know. I'm just kind of testing this out. I don't know if it works. In fact, you know, the job I kind of came to you guys on, she paid me yesterday. And I said, all right, well, that's great. First of all, fantastic, you got paid. Let's take a look and see what happened. Turned out that Dane went into his Level Set account, 
filled out the NOI, included his customer's email address on there. That notice of intent got emailed to his customer at 345 on a Wednesday afternoon. She called him a little bit before five o'clock, paid over the phone with a credit card within 90 minutes, right? This job that he had chased for three months got paid. So we know these things work. It's a huge win. Getting paid the same day, you can't beat it. All right, is there an easier way to send this paperwork? As someone who probably wears a lot of different hats, saving time and making more efficient processes is a must. Some people spend too much time trying to get the details of each job right, if at all, and it becomes a huge time suck. With Level Set, there's an automatic process that saves you time and takes the responsibility off your plate. We also know as part of this process that correct details are critical and rights, your lien rights can be invalidated if those are wrong. It takes a lot of time and it's a really confusing process, but Level Set's here to help with our scout research team that can ensure that your data is correct, that your property owner, your stakeholders are all notified properly. It's a little bit more about, hey there, Kevin, I see your question in the chat. Uh, yes, you can utilize our services there in New Jersey. And on a notice of intent, as far as whether it requires a permit, I can't speak to that. I'm not a construction attorney and I don't wanna give any legal advice. You can certainly do a heck of a lot better than me for legal advice. Um, but Level Set has a team of, or sorry, an education center where you can pose your question in your state and they can give you an answer on that. A little bit more about our lien rights management uh, suite here and how this will protect your deadlines. So we can send your notices and lien waivers in vault to protect receivables on every job, send demand letters using a standardized template and use level set pay. So when you do send that notice of intent, like my friend Dane there in New York, they had a link in that email to go ahead and run their credit card directly to Northeast Property Restoration. We want to share a couple success stories here from our customers beyond uh, Dane there. Minnesota, Jennifer, absolutely. We can definitely send it. I've worked with customers in Minnesota who have sent NOIs and seen the same kind of success on this. Uh, no matter what state you live on, as a homeowner, as a property owner, nobody likes the word lean. It's a four letter word for a reason. So we're sending those notices of intent. You will get a prompt response. Wanted to touch on that job research I mentioned here a little while ago. We have an entire team of scout researchers here at Level Set who can, they have access to the most comprehensive job data in construction and will confirm the details on your paperwork. You'll get instant updates about who is on your job and you'll partner with an expert research team to verify property information. Within Level Set, these researchers can contact you directly. Uh, to either get updates on information, if they find any discrepancies, they can alert you to that and you'll have direct communication with them. We see here on the left side of the slide, you know, one item to review, you might've provided that you believe it's a commercial job, level set through their search of county records. We find that maybe it's a state or county. You can open up that conversation or just accept our, our recommendations there. Mike, I see your question about what happens if you don't respond to a notice of intent to leave. Well, then oftentimes, you know, since this is an escalation and a notice of intent to lean, you can then in level set, go ahead and uh, file that lien itself. And so if, if people don't believe your threat, then you can follow through. A little bit more information on, you know, how do we find the owner and owner designee, general contractor, a lender or a surgeon? Uh, it's common to be in the dark about who these parties are, but here's what we can do. Uh, you can do your own research on property research and search the notice of commitment and our building permits, hire a lever set to do your project research, research for you, or send a formal request for preliminary notice information to your customer in GC. I know we covered a lot of ground there, but I'll give some time in the chat. Uh, if there's any questions specifically about this notice of intent to lean, here to help. So Micah, that's gonna depend on the state. 
uh, that you're in. Each state county might have different rules for sort of the escalation beyond the filing of the lien. Uh, certain states you uh, take action to enforce that in a court, uh, but typically work with an attorney beyond that. Oops, and I see Kevin that your hand is raised. Um, what's your question? Yeah, hi. Uh, my question is, I had a couple of years back, I painted a house for somebody and I was only paid about 20%. They started sending me checks and they stopped and shame on me, but I kind of just kind of let it slide. Is there a time limitation on when I can put in a notice to intent on a lien or is that something I could still do? So unfortunately, you know, that story is pretty common. You know, a lot of the folks that come in and work with level set that are in a similar situation in those 38 states where the notice of intent is optional, you can go ahead in your level set account and send that notice of intent to lien. You know, it's still going to have uh, the same effect of uh, getting something in your customer's mailbox in their inbox with your intention to lien. Whether you still have lien rights, it being a couple of years old, that I can't say. Again, not a construction attorney, not familiar with all the details, but you can still send that through level set and like we said, prompt payment or at least a response, you know, to bring your customer back to the table and start having a conversation about making you whole. There, Shelly. I see the note about Tennessee, and yes, I think we can um, have someone possibly reach out to you about uh, attorney services there in Tennessee. Uh, Tiffany, the note about at what point do you send a notice of intent to lien? Your results may vary. I always the, the customers that I work with, I tell them, you all have the best sense of your business and the best sense of your customers. If you feel like this customer is getting ready to not pay or is just kind of already pushed you to the back burner that's when we recommend sending an escalation document like the notice of intent to lien in some industries that could be hey i've got a 90-day lien deadline so i send it around 70 days after non-payment when i finish the work other customers like we work with a lot of restoration pros who know you know we got to stay on it really quick they send an noi at day 20 25 30 when they haven't been paid so totally up to you Christine, I see there in California, uh, if you have not sent a preliminary notice, is it possible to send an NOI? Again, if it's an optional document, you're always gonna have uh, the ability to send it, whether or not sort of when you get to the point of the lien, whether you're fully protected, whether the job has been completely uh, maintained the lien rights, that's gonna depend on the state and if you've sent it. We know in California, that 20 day preliminary notice is pretty strict. Uh, but it doesn't preclude you from sending a notice of intent on that job. And to make your question there, in Florida, we need to send a notice to owner and notice to contractor before sending a lien. The notice to owner and notice to contractor, that takes a lot of different things into uh, consideration. Uh, the type of job it is, whether you were working on a commercial or residential property, whether you are a sub, a GC, a material supplier. So without knowing all those details, I can't say you know, for certain whether it's uh, you know, what you might have been required to send to maintain lien rights. But again, it doesn't stop you from sending a notice of intent. Like we see a lot of customers come in and have a lot of success with this as a document that prompts either payment or a phone call conversation uh, from your customer. They're really effective. You know, ideally you get in and all your preliminary notices have been filed on time, you've buttoned up, you've dotted every I, you've crossed every T, so that when you get to that notice of intent, you still have the lien in your back pocket. But we do have a lot of customers who, hey, maybe you didn't have a process in place when you started that job, you're dealing with non-payment, and you send an NOI just to try to, you know, spark that conversation, spark that, that payment. Micah, I see your question about how long the lien will remain on the property. 
again, I, I can't speak to every state's and county's guidelines, how long that's there, um, but I would recommend going to Level Sets Education Center and laying out your scenario and saying, hey, you know, I might be in Colorado or I'm in Illinois and I'd like to go ahead and file this lien. How long will that stay? And a licensed construction attorney from that state will get you an answer in about 48 hours. I see your question about how much does it cost to put a lien on a property? Uh, at Level Set, we have different uh, options. You can go to the website right now, and there's a, a set cost for filing a, or you know to process your lien there. There's also a separate price for subscribers. And so I would recommend uh, taking a peek at levelset.com and starting that process. And Kevin, I don't mean to put you on your spot, but I see the hand is up. Do you have a question? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. These are all really good questions. Um, the notice of intent is such a powerful tool in the level set toolbox and really in your toolbox as well. You can go to levelset.com and send these out right now. Um, we just know that they get a response. They, they break up the log jam of non-payment and slow payment on so many jobs. Um, it, it's a fantastic option. Tiffany, that's a great question. Uh, so a notice of intent, uh, who would you send it to? The owner, the GC? Um, that's gonna depend on the type of work you did. You can some, you know, depending, uh, using our restoration contractors as an example, again, we know it's best to send, kind of cast a wide net because you might be dealing with an insurance adjuster or the property owner, or if you're a sub on a very large uh, project, you cast that wide net to get a lot of eyes on it. So we always recommend, hey, send it to that GC that hired you, but also send it to the property owner because it can get their attention as well. And at that point in the payment chain, they will look at the GC and, and they might look at their books and say, hey, we paid you. Why aren't you paying your subs? Um, so, and that's another situation where if you are a sub on a large project, you only know who hired you, level second, find out who owns the property for you then include them on any of these notices. Excellent. I'll, I'll, I'll admit this is personal preference, but when it comes to the, the notices of intent in any of our escalation documents, I prefer casting as wide a net as possible, whatever it takes uh, to get the payment that you earn, get, to get the money you deserve. Let's go ahead and let them know. Matt, I have a quick question. I know we get this often from a lot of our um, different customers is, you know, why would we file an NOI versus just picking up the phone and giving them a call, shooting them an email? Um, like why an NOI over other alternatives? Sure. Um, and so I will, I will say the first time I had any sort of real work done on my house, the uh, general contractor had me sign a lien waiver. That just said, you know, I'm, I'm agreeing that you will, that I will be leaned if I do not pay you. And my reaction when I saw lean, that four letter word that I was signing my name on was like abject horror. Not that I ever would have not paid him, but when you see the word lean on a property owner, it sends you straight to the room. You're on high alert. And so a phone call from you all that says, hey, we might pursue collections. We might do A, B, or C. That's one thing. They can hang on the phone. When you get something in the mail that says, I'm going to lean you if you don't pay me the, the money you owe me, we know that the reaction is wildly different, right? We see people snap to attention on this. Um, there really isn't a better kind of spark to payment. Like you, there's fewer ways to have that kind of leverage in these conversations than introducing the notice of intent to lean. Thank you.
I know there's a lot of sort of state specific job specific questions. We'll definitely point you to the education center. Another great thing about level set is, you know, if you're wondering if this is required of you, this is optional view, who should be notified. If you enter your job into level set and the stakeholders on that project and go to send out that notice of intent, level set will automatically tell you who needs to receive that. We'll show you the required recipients per state and county laws and also recommend it, you know, so maybe that maybe uh, your general contractor doesn't need to be notified on that but we recommend it. Maybe the insurance agent doesn't need to be notified, but we can recommend, hey, why don't you throw their details in here as well so more eyes are seen on this notice of intent to lean. There, Kyrie. Uh, so Kyrie's question is, once the notice of intent in Colorado and then the lien itself have been filed, what are the next steps? I can't speak specifically to Colorado, but typically that's when you would end up in a sort of a uh, enforcement of that lien. And that would require uh, getting an attorney involved. Level set can help pair you with an attorney. We can help uh, direct you towards vetted attorneys in your area. If you're in a state that um, has our legal guard option, we can go ahead and match you with an attorney. Um, but that would be when the escalation reaches um, the sort of beyond level set. We have we will prepare all those documents. We'll have them there for you. Therefore, then your attorney who would take over the process from there. All right, Evelyn in Sunrise, Florida. Yes, uh, after that NTO, after the notice of contract, those preliminary notices, when you're experiencing non-payment, the NOI is a great option in Florida, whether it's, you know, whether you're the prime contractor, general contractor, a sub, material supplier, NOI. We, uh, we have a ton of Florida customers, all of whom see a lot of success with this NOI. Can I see your question about uh, fees associated? So uh, potentially going through that, I can't speak to anything beyond whether county filing fees are included. I don't believe they would be there, um, but 349 for that lien. I believe that is the, the price for what we consider a retail account. There, friend, I see your question. Uh, your uh, uh, where a sort of a bad faith lien has been filed on your home. That's one where I would recommend going to our education center, letting us know what state you're in and kind of your situation. And you can get um, from a licensed construction attorney in that state some legal advice around sort of what your options are, good next steps, and, and how to protect yourself against something like that. Thank you, Justin. Yeah, that, that link that Justin just dropped there. All happy that we are, we are here to help. See some more folks kind of trickling in and trickling out. If there are any other questions about this notice of intent, uh, really because this is an escalation document, there are um, other options. You know, any slow pay experiences you currently have and customers who aren't paying you, 
feel free to drop those questions in the chat. We're happy to help out here. Kim and Mary Pat, it looks like we're kind of asking the same question about sort of fees. Uh, we do have subscription services that we offer. We can go ahead and have uh, a representative from our, uh, our company reach out to you all with more information there. Adrian, I see your question about uh, retainage on commercial projects there in Texas. Uh, 45 days since the job was completed, do I need to send an NOI? In Texas, uh, there are the monthly notice process. I'm sure you're familiar with there on the 15th of every month. When the retainage, and I'm, you'll forgive me not being a construction attorney, I know the law was just changed recently, that, that notice of unpaid retainage retainage is going to come after the job is completed. I don't know if it's at day 45 or day uh, 75, whether it's two to three months after. But the nice thing is if you include those dates, that retainage that's still due, level set will tell you exactly when that notice of an uh, unpaid retainage would be due. You're also, you know, fully within your rights to send or generally speaking within your rights to take a look at the NOI as an option in that case too. And Level I know has great resources around Texas. You know, Texas, uh, we have a whole Texas monthly notice day here in the office uh, every 15th or whichever day it falls on uh, is a very busy day um, here at the office. But we, we have excellent resources on our website. We can look up changes to the Texas monthly notice law, uh, Texas retainage collections, and we can point you in that direction. I get for anyone, you know, I, if you have more questions, level sets, resources around both the notice of intent, your state specific rules, guidelines, they're all there on our website. Um, definitely recommend taking a moment here to dive into those resources, right? Take a look at what your options are and see how you can go ahead. You know, there's free forms available on the website if you want to send these yourselves. We just want to see you get paid, right? We are here to get the money that you deserve, the money that you earned, and however we can help you do that, we're here to help. Kelly, yeah, thank you so much. We're, we're happy to hear that. I hope it helps. Um, Hi, Mary Pat. I see your question about can a contractor who was not licensed at the time file a notice of intent to leave? Without knowing sort of specifics here, I don't want to say uh, definitively whether that's an option, but I would recommend uh, jumping into the education center uh, and asking one of our payment experts there, the uh, one of the licensed construction attorneys in your state, uh, whether that being uh, licensed at the time or not would affect your ability to send a notice of intent. So there's I know there's a lot of qualifiers on that, and I, I point you in that direction because they can clear that up for you. All right, excellent. Thank you.